All right, core exercise, probably one of the first ones I like to start with, um, just because it makes you be present in what's going on. It's really easy to um, perform it without cheating. Well, not easy to perform it without cheating. I shouldn't say that. It's a very challenging exercise, so it's easy to cheat, but it's also easy to notice that you're cheating. And that's key as you're learning to really re-engage your reflexive core. So what you're going to need, a yoga mat, um, maybe some bolsters, depending on your comfort, um, lying on the floor. And what we're really going to focus on is getting the breath down to connect with that transverse abdominis, okay? So you may not feel anything the first few times if you've had a C-section, um, because of that surgery or any abdominal surgery, there may really be a disconnect. So it may take you a little bit longer, but it will happen. Um, I've had a C-section and I can engage my, my transverse abdominus. It just takes time. So we are going to be lying on our back and going through the exercise. We're going to focus with just breathing to start. And then we'll try and bring in some movement. But that will be more advanced depending on what's going on as far as whether you can engage it, whether you can stabilize and actually move. All right, so I'm gonna move down to the floor. We'll see how this might be too close. It's quite possible. So I have a half down there. So, so I like to use the half down under my head. Now, my ribs are still a little bit flared open. So when I put my hands here, my ribs kind of feel like this as opposed to this position. So with that, I may alter my position and use a little bolster. So now my, my shoulders are a little bit elevated and now those ribs are no longer up like this, but they're facing each other. So, oops. So that would be my comfort position. So you want to find what's comfortable for you. If you don't feel comfortable um, in this position, then let me know and we can alter and figure out what's most comfortable for you, okay? Then we have the neutral pelvis, so pubic symphysis, and these hip bones right here all, like if I rested a plate there, nothing would tip off, okay? And then what I'm talking about, so when you cough, <laughs> ideally, it should lower, it should um, depress down. But if you cough and it <clears throat> pooches out like that, that means that you've got the reflexive core is reversed and you've overridden the body's natural response. And that, again, is due to things like sucking in, holding our breath all day, Wearing clothes that are too tight, so we have to really suck in our belly all day long. So when you're using other muscles to uh, support your core, then it's going to shut down the muscles that are supposed to be working because it's like, hey, somebody else is doing my job, except nobody's doing its job because it's job. Every muscle has different jobs, okay? That's a very basic explanation. So what we're going to do is go back to that breath we used in week two, okay? So you're going to breathe in through your nose, get your ribs expansion, a little bit of belly expansion, and then you're going to blow through that straw. And you only want to blow as much as you don't get that pooch out. So if you're, and it's pushing out, that's far too much. You want to bring it down. So you get it so that this is staying, um, it's not pooching and it's essentially flattening down away from your hands. So you want to play with that. Again, it's slow breath, so in. And you may or may not feel anything initially, as I said. So it may be fine for you to stay in this position for five to seven minutes um, and just really practice the breathing and not even worry about anything else because intention of action is huge. 
and sending your intention to the muscles to prep them and to train them is what we're essentially doing. The best expression that I've been using now in the last week that I heard last week as a um, kind of healing mantra to have is the tortoise. The tortoise doesn't win the or the hare doesn't win the race, the tortoise does, right? Um, so slow and steady. We're always in such a rush, and this is something, as you, the more you rush, the less you will activate this because other structures are going to take over that have been working all these years, okay? So I'm going to keep playing with this just so it doesn't time it. Okay, so once you have the breathing down and you feel like you're ready, what we're going to do is lift one leg at a time, okay? So you're going to breathe in, breathe out. As you're breathing out, that's when you're going to lift that leg up. As long as this is still not pooching out, you're okay. As long as you haven't been forced to flatten your back down, you're okay. If you yaw or move through the pelvis, that would be another clue. So three clues, pooching, flattening the back, or moving or um, toggling the hip, that means you're not ready yet. The strength isn't there, and that's okay. Now, if it is there, then you would just continue doing that. So one leg at a time. Now, that would be basic. Um, moving within an inhalation, exhalation up, and then again on the down movement, moving um, inhalation, exhalation down. When it gets more advanced, then you could do um, inhalate or exhalation out. So you could do inhalation um, as you are getting air, and on every exhalation you do movement, so either up or down. Now to make it more advanced, you could exhale, bring it up, turn on my camera. There we go. Okay, so bring it up. And on the second exhale, instead of dropping down, you bring the other leg up. So, I was dropping that one a little early, sorry, because I was trying to turn and start to kind of wrap up, because this is a longer video. Um, so, there's many modifications to that so I did basically four so just the breathing and that's okay the breathing's just fine then breathing so breathing out and on the exhalation moving the leg up holding it in place breathing in and on exhalation moving it down then there was the um, exhalation bringing it up breathing in exhalation dropping down and then continuing that. So it's a more continuous flow movement. And then there's breathing in, exhaling, bringing one leg up, breathing in, exhaling, bringing the second leg up, holding, and then breathing in, exhalation down, down. So not holding your breath, but holding that in that position. So those are four different modica modifications. There's many more, but that's a a good place to see where you are and pretty much guaranteed most people will be in the first two you'll either have to continue with the breathing to actually feel and to actually have it not pooch out um, your stomach and then you'll be able to pot potentially move one leg with no compensation but may not be able to move the other one um, like having one leg down and moving the opposite leg because we are not equal side to side depending on our habits. So then you would stick with potentially just
doing the one side to give the, the transverse a little bit of a load and just really slowly work the other side. Because again, the three things we want to avoid, holding our breath, so there's four. Holding our breath, you don't want to hold your breath. Number two, you don't want your, your back to hyperextend as you lift off or to curl out along the ground. So your pelvis should stay stable and there should be no movement through the lumbar spine, the lower back. Um, number three, you shouldn't pooch out in the, the abdomen. So when you lift, which is more low to the system, as you lift, if your stomach is pooching out, that means it's too much load for what the muscle is capable of and you have to back down a stage. And the fourth is pelvic instability. So if as you lift, your pelvis is like wah, wah, then that's not stable enough and you want to back down a stage as well until you can build up, okay? There's other little cheats to look for, um, but right now those are the big ones. As you progress, we'll look at different cheats, okay? Have a great day and if there's any questions, just shoot me a message. Bye.